What's up guys, Ace here, for you guys a Commander Legends spoiler video, and it's been some time, it's been like a week since we've got our last leaked official spoiler, I don't even know if that's a good word to say it, but it's been some time, and reason being of course, the last spoilers we had gotten were actually just like some guy uploading some like stolen video, stolen cards, and it kind of sucked, but apparently he had more cards, and it was just like teasing us to like promote his own, um, I guess a little social website. Anyways, it's kind of unfortunate. Anyways, that's that's neither here nor there because today we have the official MTG Commander Legends spoilers. So this is day one. Let's just let's just get into it. Let's just let's just jump into it. Um, some of these cards, of course, we've seen before. We've seen them through the the guys' leaks, and now we just have the official leak of it, which is nice because we have like the the etched versions and we can see them in full clarity and the artwork, which is nice. Um, Especially like with some of the newer cards that they, they're showing, it's like it's finally good to see them and seeing that the leaks were not only true, but also um, the actual official document of the leaks that actually showed the the gatherer text for the card were actually pretty darn close. And it feels to me like these leaks have been more and more, it's becoming more and more true. Um, not in a sense that like they were crazy, but in a sense that like whoever gets these leaks, they just know how to get leaks. <laughs> Like, gosh, Wizards has been doing some stuff. Anyways, we're almost two minutes in the video and haven't started the, 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 the freaking video. Anyways, let's start it. So first card, we have Rebecca, Architect of Ascension. For three and a white legendary creature human artificer, artifacts you control have protection from each converted mana cost among artifacts you control with partner, and it's a 3-4. Is this card any good? Probably not, unless you're going with a heavy artifact theme with white as a partner. I don't know if it's worth it. Like, do you really want to destroy artifacts that much? I feel like most of the case, the people who are going to be destroying your artifacts are green, and they're going to be doing, like, mass artifact destruction. Otherwise, they're going to play, like, Null Rod sort of effects. And Null Rod is colorless, so you play it in literally any deck you want to. Um, so with that being said, it's like, I don't think this one's worth it, but, uh, eh, whatever. Whatever. File Smasher, the Fierce. This needed a reprint, and gosh, it looks pretty darn good. That looks good. That's, that's some good etching right there. Although, the side of it seemed a little weird. Maybe it's because it's just not like... Nah, it's typical siding, isn't it? I don't know. Marble Diamond. Uh, we've seen it before. Briar Blade Adept. Born a black creature, elf assassin. Briar Blade Adept tax. Target creature and opponent controls the atmosphere until end of turn. Okay, so 3-4, that gives a, that shrinks a creature a little bit. That's right. Then it has Encore, which also... If you guys haven't known, Encore, this is actually a pretty decent ability from what I've seen, especially from like a relatively stronger commander-geared um, release set. This is like a pretty decent like way to get graveyard recursion from like cards that would otherwise just be rotting to graveyard if you're in a color that doesn't have much recursion, like blue or something like that. I don't know why you'd use Encore that much, because you have to do it at sorcery speed. But otherwise, it's like just rotting your graveyard. Anyways, this is like a good ability, I think, relatively. Some of the, the, the costs are pretty absurd, but like for what you want, this is like a removal spell plus a creature that just swings. Anyways, Encore 3 and a black. I sold this card from a graveyard. For each opponent, create a token copy that attacks an opponent this turn if able. Um, they gain haste, sacrifice them between the next end step, activate this only as a sorcery. So for each opponent, so if you're having three opponents, this is giving a creature minus three, minus three, or maybe you're going to take down a few mana dorks. It's not that bad to think about it. Um, the only problem with this is obviously it's not going to be that bad because it's going to be pretty bad because it's, it's a common, like think about that. Eh. So with that being said, that's just sort of the, the overview of how the commons are going to look. And I'm probably not going to go over too many commons because they honestly seem kind of mediocre. So... We'll probably go over, unless there's like some uncommons that strike me, it's probably just going to be mostly mythics and rares we're looking at in this video. Uh, anyways, next up we have Blade Griff Prototype. Five mana artifact creature Griffin with flying. Whenever Blade Griff Prototype deals combat damage to a player, destroy a target non permanent of that player's choice that one of your opponents controls. 3-2. Eh? Ooh. So at turn six, this has to swing in and hit an opponent and they have to choose something that they want destroyed. I'm gonna pass on this one. Although the stat line isn't that bad, maybe for like a more aggressive deck this might be good, or maybe some sort of political gain you might see this card as favorable. But other than that, this card doesn't seem that good at all. Um, I would say if this was like a three mana, three, two, that's still even kind of meh. It, it really depends on your opponent's threat assessment. Of course, you can like gear them towards what you want destroyed. But um, eh, I, don't, I don't think this card is that good. I don't think it's that good at all. Zenigo, Scott of Revels. You've seen this card before. Pretty decent. 
pretty big smashy. I'm loving the new frames I'm having for these gods. That's pretty sweet. Um, might have to pick up a few of these for myself. Next up, we have Phyrexian Triniform. Nine mana artifact creature golem. When Phyrexian Triniform dies, create three, three colorless golem artifact creature tokens. Wow. Nine mana for a nine, nine. But also if it dies, you get nine mana worth of power and toughness. In a sense, I guess, right? Um, the best part is it has Encore 12. For 12 mana, you can Encore it, which, of course, means the same thing we did for Briar Blade Adept. So essentially, you're going to make three of them for each opponent if you're playing a three-person pod. And bam, you have three 9-9s nine -nine swinging and attacking. And then they die, of course. And you have three sets of 3-3 three -three artifact creature golems. Is that good? I think it's pretty decent. Um, I mean, nine mana is a lot. Like generally, turn um, games end around turn. If you're if you're like trying to slow the game around, this is sort of the late game sort of card. And swinging for nine at each opponent is it really worth? I could see it being worth playing against control. And this is one of the things I really like about these encore ability is because it helps aggro in a sense where like, okay, you can exile this card and create a token of the creature, but there's no card to counter, right? They can't control players really don't counter that many abilities. And so I'm definitely looking forward a a creature card that will just like completely destroy some sort of control deck. Uh, because of course, as you know, commander's full of attrition cards, and this is sort of ability that definitely hoses attrition. Um if you don't play like the, um, too much like crazy board up and stuff like that in a higher level, um, higher power pod. So I'm definitely looking for good things with Encore, but maybe who knows? Maybe there's not going to be as much as I'm hoping for. Next up, we have Serific Greatsword, one in a white. Goodness gracious. Artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus two. Whenever equipped creature attacks, player with the most life or tied for the most life, create a four, four white angel creature token with flying. It's That's tapped and attacking that player. Equip four. Oh, of course, white gets it again, boys. Time and time again. White literally gets the crappiest, crappiest of cards. Not only is it... Okay, it's a two-mana artifact, right? That is colored, which kind of sucks because there's a lot of things that say destroy colored artifacts, and eh, it's whatever. Um, the fact that it's white, I guess, is what gives you the angel token. But we still have the moon silver spear that does the same thing, except it costs... I guess it costs four for the actual casting cost, but that's whatever. So you get this down early, and then I guess, okay, whatever. Um, sorcery equipping is still pretty rough to play in Commander. And not only does this have to attack an opponent with the most life, eventually, if you're attacking people with this, you're probably winning the game, right, already? If they're letting you attack with this, you're probably winning the game. And eventually, they're not going to have the most life, and you're going to have the most life, right? So there's a few problems with this in the sense that it's, it's kind of a drawback. Like, if they just said attack with a 4-4 four, four. like if, if you get six power worth of damage um based off just equip alone and not having that the clause of needing to attack the highest or tied most life player then i could see it being playable and even then it's like the equip is so hard like can you imagine spending two mana casting this in turn two then turn four you equip this at sorcery speed yikes that's a mega yikes i'm i'm gonna have to skip on this one boys i mean i I see what they're trying to do with the Surf of Greatsword, but like, come on, come on. And also, mind you, look at look at this symbol here. It's a mythic. It's a myth. Okay, I, I know I know you're gonna say like, oh, it's draftable. It's it's your draft. But still, this is so bad. This is so and I bet you I mean, okay, to be fair, other colors have had this happen to them too, right? Not every card's gonna be completely good, like playable card, and there's got to be some like draft trap in there. But still. Uh this could have been such better draft chaff. Um, then I guess it wouldn't be chaff at that point. I don't know. I feel like this card is missing out. It could have been so much better for a draft and like still bad for a commander if you like even lowered the CMC to like three, like even two in that case, right? Then it's like an all star, I guess, at that point. Um, then, it'd be, then it would be playable, but it still wouldn't be playable like it would be like, uh, like a, without GTA still. I don't know. This is, it kind of sucks, but it happens. Next up, we have Liza, Shroud of the Dusk, which is a sister of Avacyn and her her brood, which is a two mana, white, white, and a black costing legendary angel creature. Rather than pay two for each previous time you've cast this spell from your command zone this game, pay two life that many times. Flying lifelink, whenever a player has a spell, they lose two life, five, five. So the good thing about this is, of course, it gets around command tax, and it does give you some life back for casting it. It does require you to swing, so you're going to be paying a lot of life. Uh, it's okay, I guess, for like mid power to battle cruiser. But other than that, this is like pretty chunky the cost. 
the fact it does tax um, players is kind of rough. And that's the rough part. It taxes players. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. So, of course, if you're playing this, you better not be casting any spells afterwards. Make sure all your crap is on the field because, ooh this is going to this is gonna hurt a little bit, boys. It's going to hurt just, just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. That's fine, whatever. I don't play Orzhov, and I don't think there are too many other like incredibly strong Orzhov commanders. But if this is your thing, if you really want to, if you really get your, your Jimmy's shingled or whatever from not paying the commander tax for the sort of ability, I, I mean, do, do what you need to do. Do what you need to do. Uh, doesn't seem that great to me though. Next up, we have this one, which I am not familiar with. Ghost of Remories di Pietro, Pietro, which is three mana, two, and a blue legendary creature pirate spirit. There we got a pirate commander. Nice. Ghost of blah, 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 can't be blocked by creatures with toughness three or greater. So it basically can't get chump blocked. Too. I mean, it can block, get blocked, but like odds are you're probably going to kill whatever. This is probably going to kill whatever it blocks, which is nice. I mean, it just means like it's legendary spirit that's like, it's obviously going to kill whatever comes in its way, which is kind of like flavorful, I think. Whenever it deals common damage to a player, choose up to one in any graveyard that has been discarded. Wait, choose up to one card in any graveyard that has been discarded or milled this turn. That put that card into its owner's hand partner two three that's a little weird um the only thing i see is like how do you build around this because you could play a black partner and then go for like a discard thing but that's like why would you want to discard your opponent stuff so it's like that's like a self milk exclusively which isn't that bad i guess if you have if you're playing a lot of self mill this becomes like a tutor in a, in a sense whenever you deal combat damage to a player, which is a few hoops to jump through because you have to mill first. And it's like, oh, but before damage, I'm going to mill 20 cards. And it's like they can exile your graveyard. Um, a lot of, I think a lot of like graveyard shenanigans are at switcher speed anyways, so I don't think it'll be too much of a, a problem uh, at getting the trigger to go off. But I do think if you're getting the trigger off at sorcery speed, um, I mean, if you're getting this, if you're if you're milling it, your main phase might be a problem, but other than that, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that easy to to beat of a strategy. It's whatever. It's whatever. I I deem it a whatever ability. You guys know how I deem my use whatever. Uh, next up we have Sphinx of the Second Sun, six blue blue creature Sphinx flying at the beginning of your post combat main phase. You get an additional beginning phase after this phase six six. So this card is kind of nutty. So the beginning phase, if I'm not mistaken, is the whole phase before your pre and combat main phase. So that means your untap, your upkeep, your draw, and then you head into your post combat main phase. So you get to untap an additional time, which is kind of like ramp. That the weird thing is, it's on the beginning of your post combat main phase. So you can't play anything until this until this ability resolves, right? So that means you're going to go straight back into the next main phase and not going to be playing anything beforehand. But the up, the good part is you get to untap, maybe do some instant speed shenanigans, which is this is sort of a deck you want to put that into, which is kind of your top end, I think. Um, it's, just, it's kind of weird to think about it, and I'll talk about it later. But anyways, you get to play things at instant speed, and then, oh, go to your next uh, beginning phase, and then you get another... Um, at the beginning of your post-coming phase, you get an additional main phase. So yeah, it's only triggers once. So... You get two untaps, two draws, and two upkeeps. So that triggers the upkeep co upkeep things. So like wrist, um, Sylvan Libraries will trigger twice. That also means things like Cumulative Upkeep triggers twice, which may or may not be a problem, especially something with like Ristic Remora. Uh, that means you're getting two counters on your upkeep, which is kind of a drawback, honestly. I could see that happening with the tries. People are like, oh, okay, I probably should have put this in the deck. Anyways, this is eight mana. And if you're tapping about eight mana and this lives... Uh, I don't know what to think about. Like, it it sounds pretty good, but it's like you gotta protect it. It's eight mana, so it's probably a little, super super late game, and you're not winning immediately. It, I mean, don't get me wrong; it's super flashy and all, but I just don't think it's worth the cost. Maybe if you can cheat it in reanimator, some like blue black reanimator, maybe it'd be kind kind of cool. But like, if you're getting it in on turn three or something like that, isn't it mostly just a Frexing arena? I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, it's a six six, but like eight mana. Ooh, that's that's kind of tough, boys. I think I'm gonna have to. I might have to skip on this one. Next up, we have Cyanide Eye of the Storm, three and a blue legendary creature, Jin Monk flying. When Cyanide Eye of the Storm attacks, Scry X for X number attacking creature with flying partner, and it's a three two. Eh, I mean it's okay. Doesn't seem that that, that good to be honest. Some of these cards we've seen before, 
But um, I'm just going to go over them again. Next up, we have Nymerus, Una's Trickster. Legendary creature, Fairy Knight. Flash and Flying. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of those cards in your hand, another card into the graveyard. This isn't that bad. It kind of reminds me of Rashmi, but the only problem with it is it costs more than Rashmi. It's in black, not blue, and green. So it kind of sucks at that point. But I mean, black is still pretty good on its own, right? Right. It's just, I think black is the worst out of the bug colors. Um, and also it puts it in your graveyard. So it's vulnerable to like graveyard shenanigans. So, eh. But then you can also like reanimate stuff like the freaking Sphinx of the Second Sun. Right. That's a good upside. I don't know. I don't think this card is worth it. I don't think it's worth it. But eh, who knows? Who knows? Um, Tabesh, Sot, Doom of Fools, five mana legendary planeswalker, Sot. Plus two, create two zero one black thrill creature tokens. Plus one, sacrifice another creature or planeswalker. If you do, draw two cards. Then draw another card if you sacrifice the permit that was a commander. Minus ten, gain control of our commanders. Put all commanders from the command zone onto the battlefield under your control. That has partner and it can be your commander and cost starts at four loyalty. I think this card is kind of strong. I'm not sure if I was like praising it too much in my last review, but the fact that it plays itself for free once you get the minus ten and you get your other other players' commanders. That's kind of spicy. I don't know how good it is, but I think the fact that it creates thralls that block itself, that protect itself, is kind of strong. It might be too strong, I think, a little bit. Uh, it's, it is at five mana, so like you sort of expect it. But jeez, uh, I don't know what to think about this card. I, I hope to see it. I think it's definitely going to be super spicy. Empiric Tutor reprint, super sick. How this is getting reprinted? You know what that means? It just means like so much other stuff is getting reprinted, and I would say. Wait before you buy anything now, because the odds of them reprinting some like super good stuff, I mean, and we know based off the leaks, that they're probably reprinting the, well, like they're 100%, right? These leaks have not failed us yet. Um, they're reprinting the straw rack, and they're reprinting Vampiric Tutor. Next is going to be Imp Seal or something like that. It's going to be crazy, right? Um, yeah, just hold your money. They will reprint cards. It looks like they're reprinting it. They will reprint it. So that's cool. Uh, next up, we have Sat Will, which looks part of a mythic cycle uh, for each color. It looks like we're getting a will from, from each color combination. which is kind of cool, which is sort of reminiscent of the free cards from the Ikaria Commanders set. So that'll be cool to see. This one is five mana instant. Choose one. If you control a commander, as you cast a spell, you may choose both. So each opponent sacrifices a creature with the control with the greatest power. Nice the removal spell. Exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. Then create X zero black one thralls where X is the greatest power among cards exiled this way. Creature cards exiled this way. So you're going to create a lot of sack fodder. Um, is it good? Maybe. I mean, they're all zero ones, but that just means they can get sacked from Zot. And Zot also only has upticks until he gets his minus 10. So he's either creating more thralls or he's drawing cards. And that's that seems pretty good. Um... It's graveyard hate as well as um, creature destruction or removal spell. So that's kind of cool. It also is pretty nice to see that it's an edict. So it's good against like control decks that only have their commander or something like that. Um, or just like people who like to play big stompy crap, right? That's kind of good with there. Anyways, that's it's a fine card. It's a fine card. I don't think it's too crazy because of like the, the CMC, but I think it's a totally fine card. Next up, we have one of my personal favorites that we've seen thus far, um, and that is Quirk the Thumbless, red and a generic legendary creature, Goblin Wizard. Whenever you cast an instant or spell, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, return that spell to its owner's hands. If you win the flip, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Partner 2-2. Two, two. Jeez, this is, this is a card I've been waiting for. This might be the start of my first mono red control deck. I don't know, or or spell slinger. I guess you could say it's spell slinger. The only problem with it is you're gonna have to be playing a lot of like reverberate type effects because of the fact that you have to, um, I guess control the board. I guess in a sense uh, against counter spell decks. And not only that, but also like the 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 fact that you have to chance that your spell won't resolve is gonna be super risky. But also, I think it's gonna be all the more fun. Um, yeah, Kirk is super cool. I like this commander so much. It costs very little. I think that's gonna be super cool, and the fact that it's double or nothing, and you and it works really well with his freaking artifact. That sounds great. That's just flavorful. It's just uh, this is like I freaking like this card. I, maybe it's too cute, but I think I want to make a deck with this. I don't know how do you build it. Do you just play like coin flip tribal? I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. But it'll be fun to play, especially when you actually get to the freaking 
spell to resolve. <laughs> it just like, ah, oh, it's so juicy. Like reverberate twice, or like reiterate, or any of those like copy spells, like copy some juicy stuff. Like copy their freak, even copying their like um, their three visits or something. Not three visits. Uh, any like land ramp or something like that. Like cultivate or any sort of draw spell. If you can copy it, that's just super nutty. That's just super nutty. And it's for on a two mana creature. That's oh, that's so good. I mean, of course, there's a chance it'll fail, but still. But can a man dream here? It sounds good. It sounds really good. Next up we have Mnemonic Deluge. Six blue 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 sorcery. Exile target and center sorcery card from a graveyard. Copy that card three times. You may cast the copies without paying their mana costs. Exile Mnemonic Deluge. I think this card's kind of slow. Of course, if you're milling yourself and it seems like you want to put this in a self mill card, a self mill deck, this could be better. Like maybe you mill like an expropriate and then you get cast three expropriates. That's kind of nutty. And this is the cost of an expropriate. So like you're probably putting this in the deck with expropriate and you want to like mill yourself. And it, it if that rolls around and that happens, you're you're definitely winning. That's just a win con, um, because you're getting not only three turns, but you're also getting like nine permanents <laughs> from your opponents so that's gonna be spicy um imagine that with kirk that'd be juicy gosh kirk is just kirk is just super spicy i'm just looking at it with this card right here it's just like the possibilities are super endless and like fun this is kind of crazy kind of nutty um all right uh, that's whatever next up we have brian line moon kraken six blue blue legendary creature kraken when brian line brian Lynn, the moon kraken enters the battlefield or whenever you cast a spell with a pyramid it costs six or greater it may return target non permanent to its owner's hands um you probably want to do this with like some weird large kraken tribal that does a bunch of etv crap um i don't know what else you put it with like this seems kind of fun it's super like specific, but that's why it's that common. It's, it sounds kind of juicy, kind of juicy. Um, yeah, not, not too crazy. I mean, this is obviously you're playing this in the sort of lower power level battle cruiser format, but um, yeah, that's whatever. It's it happens. Like this, these cards are definitely needed in these in these sets. Anyways, that is my review of the cards you got released. There are some super honorable mentions of cards I would like to make a deck around. First and foremost, Kirk, the Thumbless. The Thumbless. <laughs> this card is so crazy. Like, I love the fact that this can double. So it's like kind of card draw in your command zone. And the fact that whenever you cast it, whenever you cast instant or sorcery, if it resolves, you're getting two. So if you're playing a removal spell, um, hopefully it targets more than one thing. Because if it targets one from each opponent, you're essentially getting a, it, and that's that's sort of Merry Christmas land. But like, imagine if you like you get a cultivate and you verberate it, right? You're you're drawing two cards and you're putting two lands on the battlefield. But imagine a scenario when you're like copying something like a, um, you, you like I don't know what, what else what, what crazy like AOE board wipe you'd play with this. But like if you can like hit anything from anyone, and you just copy it twice, it's just like Zaxara or, or Zakama, whichever one's a copy one. It's just juicy. And this is in mono red. I, I love my monocolor decks, but like this is just super juicy and spicy. I like it. Um, I think Tevesh Zat is going to be kind of good. Might be kind of slow. But the fact that you can, like, Planeswalker protects itself and also has. I don't know if it's a game ending all, actually, to be honest. The ult isn't that game ending, but it's a good value engine. The fact that it pluses, it's a good value engine. And you're in black, so it's probably, you're probably doing that stuff anyways. It's a good value engine, and like the alt isn't game winning, but it's definitely like stack stacking, where like it stacks your opponents. They can't do what they want to do because most of the time, if you're playing a non, if you're playing um, if you're if the decks you're playing against are less than three colors, odds are they revolve around their commander, and if that's the case, you taking their commander is just gonna make the game so much longer, and you're probably gonna progress further in your game plan than they're gonna progress in their game plan, and so that's why I think this card is gonna be pretty good. That was be pretty good. Um, anything else? Anything else? So, Seraph the Seraphic Great Sword, I think, is just a troll card. I might be maybe being too rough on this, but I think this card is so troll, so troll. Um, but that looks like that is it for my review session slash spoilers. 
on these magic cards. Some of them are pretty good, some of them are pretty eh, but uh, you know, that's that's how life goes. Anyways, peace out guys, have a nice one, and I'll catch you guys later. Deuces.